Hello and welcome to A to Z of the 80s and today the letter is G and that is G for gadgets. My name's Nick and my name's Neil and we're from the show Old Gold Tech and we're here today to discuss our top five gadgets. Okay, so top five gadgets and we are going to be starting off with cassettes and versus cartridges. cartridges. So what was so good about your cartridge? Well, I don't think you, that's the appropriate way to discuss that. What I was so good is. about your tape? Because my cartridge came after that. Well, my tape was enabling me to copy, which we shouldn't do, of course. Bit piracy there. Bit piracy. Any other game from any of my friends at school. Tapes were transferable, really easy to copy stuff like that. But they were a pain to load. It took forever. And if they broke, or if they didn't sort of uh, play properly, that was it. The game was over. Well, the cartridge was uh, fairly indestructible. Mm. As this, this proves, as this is an old Atari 2600 cartridge. Still works today. Uh, Super Football still works today. It's been dropped, it's been thrown about, it's got a bit of ink on it there, or some sort of acid from the loft, and it still works, and it's... If I can... It still still works. I'm not wanting to condone piracy, but sort of how, how good was it to copy and give to your friends? Um... Well, you, you couldn't, couldn't copy it, but that was the point. You didn't. You didn't do that. You'd you just so, you, them it would be a swapsy. So you go. I will give you this, and you will give me that. All right. So number five: cassettes and cartridges. Coming in at number four is something you may have not seen: a Roland R5 drum machine. Now I love this thing. Came out in 1989, and that's when I got it. And it was one of the first sort of multi timbral drum machines that you could actually get. Ooh. Ooh. And it had things like flam and tom toms. And it was one of the first drum machines you could actually program using the pads. These pads were amazing because they actually gave you some touch sensitive response when you were programming. Built in sequencer, full MIDI. Uh, stereo sound and it was great and it was used on a lot of records that you probably heard in the 80s it was an amazing piece of kit I still use it today uh, I love this piece of, uh, of technology and uh, number four the Roland R5 drum machine did you say it ran on flan no not flan you had something called flam which was a which is a term when you you heard a flam when you drum you go that is a flam that's flam the R5 drum machine from Roland Okay, coming in at number three after a flan-powered drum machine is, of course, the Atari 2600. Now, this was my first ever games console, mm -hmm. released in 1977, but I didn't get it until around 1984-85. What uh, was great about it, then? What wasn't great about it, Neil? That, I don't what, know. What, what I didn't have one, so you tell me. What wasn't great about it? Well, okay. okay, so um, this was my first ever console, and it was everything I ever wanted. I could play... Games that would load in seconds, yeah, like consoles, yeah. Super Football, like the classic Centipede, which now kids will know as Snake, ah, of course. Right, yeah. um, clicked in the top like so, turned on the power, and instant gaming fun. It wasn't amazing graphics, but it didn't matter. Joystick built in and all that? Joystick built in. There you go, nothing. No, no craziness, system. it had a reset button. You could even go for TV type of black and white or colour. Yeah. Really? Now, you know... If you had a friend coming round, you could even you could even plug two joysticks in. Now I know that there's something coming up in the top five that you had to buy a peripheral for yes. to even have friends. Yes. Now I didn't need to do that, obviously. Maybe. I just had to have another joystick. There you go. Which was an easy thing to get. But no, I, I spent many hours on this thing and you know, it still works now. Um, and you can get emulators for Atari games and stuff like that. Nothing like the real thing though. No, nothing like the real thing. The original one that came out was built in like a wooden box. Uh, and I'd like one of those. They look absolutely cool. But no, this is definitely my number three. Number three. Neil, what would be your number two? Some would argue this would be number one, but this is my number two. Some it would. is the Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48K Plus. Mm. Do you know what the plus stands for? I don't, tell me keyboard <laughs> oh yeah oh. now we know the spectrum had a rubberized keyboard and it was famous for that cheap accessible gaming for all but this thing had plastic keys and these plastic keys meant a lot to people 
<laughs> they did, because they gave you that sort of lovely plastic keyboard feel. There was only one design fault with them, though, because if you were to turn this thing upside down, all the keys would fall out. Now, that is a game in itself. As a 12-year-old kid, trying to find out which keys go in the right holes, amusement for Quirky hours. Fun. Quirky fun. Quirky fun. <laughs> now, back to your point about the Atari, where you had an issue with the fact that, um, well, other games consoles didn't have joysticks. You can see that this thing does not have any joystick ports. This is why you were to buy one of these wonderful gadgets from uh. Data Electronics, which allowed you to plug this joystick in the back and have gaming fun. However, <laughs> only one joystick port on this. See, I had no friends, so I had to play uh, on my own with the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Still a great accessible device. Again, lots of um, emulation software out there for it, but I love this. Sinclair ZX Spectrum, my favourite game, Jet Set Willy. Never mind all the other games, that was where it all started for me. Jet Set Willy. So the Sinclair ZX Spectrum plus... Plus, sorry, yes, plus, plus keyboard. Plus keyboard. For your QWERTY needs. Thank you. Okay, so it's time to talk about number one. What is it? it I'm, is, I'm excited. It is, is it? a slightly yellowy aged Commodore 64. <sighs> yes. No, we've we've done shows on this thing before. We have. we have done a versus style show where we've discussed the merits of both of them, but we both know that this was the superior machine. Yeah, I mean, I have to say that hats off, the Commodore 64 was a superior machine. It was. It lasted longer. Um, than the Spectrum did and eventually I managed to sort of acquire one of these in my later years uh, it was a great piece of kit but it had what you could do is you could I was quite lucky in the fact that when I received one I had the tape deck thing as right. well and I also had cartridge based games ah so you get both yeah so yeah. I used to have Flimbo's Quest on cartridge I think I had Terminator on cartridge I had a few Emily Hughes' Soccer oh. on cartridge was it a very high voice yeah yeah uh, and then I had, um, and then I also had again the ability to play with two friends. Ah, oh, see, two joysticks. Uh, yeah, yep, so I could do that. Um, but it was just a really solid little system. Mm. It was really good. And there was, I just remember being a kid and looking at my desk and thinking, I have a computer. It didn't break though, did it? No, that's the thing. I mean, it's quite but robust. Good, good keys on it. The first one did break. Is that because but you dropped that it? That was because a friend came round and pushed all of the keys down with his hand at the same time on my birthday. Right. And Argos was closed, and I couldn't what take it do? back, so I had to wait. But, no, it was indestructible, and this is the second one I had, and he wasn't allowed to come around anymore. What about the sound on these things? Sounds uh, this, good. this is what really made these games, because Rob Hubbard, as we spoke about before, yeah, Hubbard. used to produce a lot of soundtracks for games like Rambo and all that kind of stuff. And it was it was great. I mean, the, the sound alone. And you got some uh, I got a few games, games here. here. One of the best Christmases I ever had was when I went round to my auntie that I only ever saw like at Christmas. And she had a bin bag full of games, not cats, no games. games. <laughs> and uh, she had a bin bag full of games. So my whole Christmas was just spent literally whacking tapes in and press play on tape. Uh, I mean, I had a lot of titles. Yogi's Great Escape wasn't all that much of a thrill, but it was in a bin bag and it was free, so it was all there right. You go. Um, PC Fuzz, which was more like a carry on style game, cartridge, like yeah. yeah, no, this was a tape one. Oh, was it? Uh, yep, oh, uh, it like and it's, I've still got all the instructions and stuff for the PC Fuzz there. Um, it was a bit of a weird game, really, to be honest with you. Like, there's meant to, there's a policeman on there with a truncheon on a unicycle. Now, we all know they drive Vauxhall diesels, yeah, they do, yeah. Um, so, yep, but one of my favorite ever games was from the British um, games maker Codemasters, and it was Dizzy Games. I loved Dizzy Games. Dizzy was an egg. Yeah. Suite of games on here as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, and he would get into trouble and he would he would basically... It was almost like a role-playing, a very early role-playing game. You had to get this before you can get there. And that's what started my love off for more in-depth games and stuff like that. But they put out these Dizzy packs where you had loads. I mean, on here there's Quick Snack, Smell, Spellbound Dizzy, Dizzy Prince of the Yoke Folk. Sounds a bit weird. Uh, Dizzy Down the Rapids, which was absolutely amazing, and Panic Dizzy. But it was great, and they built a little franchise around an egg. Uh, it was brilliant. So that is why this is my number one, because it started lots of play. me off. Lots yeah. of play. It started me off in terms of in terms of my, my gaming career, if you want to say that. Mm. Um, and it made me the person I am today. Without that, I wouldn't be sitting here. And that's not a bad thing. 
Hi, we're Old Gold Tech, and you've been watching A to Z at the 80s. You can find us at Old Gold Tech, and you can find the A to Z at the 80s right here. Okay. Uh, I've had an extremely good time here. Great time. Today, this is a really, really cool show, and today's letter was the letter G. You can follow us at oldgoldtech.com and you can also check out our new film show called Popcorn Weasels and also follow me at N-I-C-J-O-M-O on Twitter. This has been a great show and yet again it's carried on the debate of Spectrum versus Commodore 64.